All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm your host, Mike Ham. We are here in Hoboken today with Jordan and Joel Hernandez. Guys, Hi. welcome to the show. Hi, thank you Thanks so much for, for having us. us. We're yeah. excited. It's quite crazy that you guys said that at both at the exact same time. <laughs> we'll probably do that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm really excited. Uh, you know, like Hoboken to me is like one of those places, like I like coming to Hoboken, but I, who likes driving into Hoboken? Right, or no Parking one. in Hoboken, yeah. it's, you know, not the best. Yeah. But I was excited because I get to come and interview you guys, and it's, I'm yeah. just pumped. We're yeah. excited. It's for so you to be excited. here. Hoboken is great, I agree. The parking and uh, yeah. driving is the lesser we, side. Yeah. Well, you can't have everything. <laughs> you exactly. Know, right. you know? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, we have Frank Sinatra. We have all the restaurants you could ever imagine. <laughs> yeah. We have all the bars you could ever imagine. Just the parking. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's just one thing. Right. Yeah, it happens Views. to be a big thing. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> um, but it's all good. So uh, we're going to learn a little bit about you uh, both in this first segment. Um, and then we're going to kind of get into all that you guys do and then the yeah. nonprofit stuff and everything as we kind of progress through this episode um but maybe like so this the, the stuff that you guys do double dough and completely booked mm -hmm. and four little souls uh, incorporated yeah. um that's not your full-time job no 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 we we do we do unfortunately have to work no i'm just kidding i, know. I do Same. really I, do. <laughs> Same. I feel what you're saying yeah, yeah. yeah. in I our do free time we work, work right yeah. <laughs> i do really love our job we've actually been at the same company we yeah. work together Oddly enough, I am now Joelle's boss. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the company that we work for <laughs> is Media Planet Publishing Incorporated. So I'm the managing director there. It's a content marketing publishing company. Mm -hmm. So we produce advocacy and awareness campaigns. The only ones you would see here in New Jersey are within USA Today. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do also work with other larger mm -hmm. newspapers, LA Times, The Chronicle, et cetera. And, and Joelle, I'm a, a senior business development manager. So I lead a team of six sales people um, and we produce these campaigns so I do a lot of the back end research and then also sales coaching and okay. hiring and interviewing. Right. So you guys got a lot going on just with yeah. work yes. and then I think that's funny like in our free time we work um, <laughs> but uh, okay it's, but you're both from I mean obviously like you're twins if you can't see that on YouTube yeah. like <laughs> they're twins right. yes. and if you're listening then you would have no idea. I know yeah, yeah. Um, well our voices yeah you might yeah. not be able to tell who's that it's a different person there <laughs> are actually two of us <laughs> yeah. if, you're, if you're not watching yeah. you might not know um, like how is she doing that? Yeah you yeah. Know. Um, okay, but uh, from New Jersey originally, yeah, right? New Jersey, yes. Yeah. So yeah. We're from Hazlitt, New Jersey. Okay. So we grew up, and then we went to college in Baltimore. So we were down there for four years, but came right back. Yeah. Same we're, college. Same college. Yes, we went to Loyola, Loyola University. Have you guys Greyhounds. ever, at any point in your lives, spent any time apart? The five days yes. is the longest amount of time we've spent apart. Really? Yes. I went on a work trip to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And so I was there, it was just my team that went, and I was there for five, four nights, five days. That's yep. the longest wow. amount of time. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And that was in 2016. Did you, like, feel, did, like you missed her, I'm oh, assuming. Oh, yeah. I was crying yeah. for weeks leading up to it. I was so <laughs> scared. <Yeah. laughs> we got to go to a free, it was, and it was vacation. It wasn't right. even, it like, a really work trip. It was through yeah. work, but it was vacation, and right. she was, like, sobbing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we both were. Uh, yeah. That that she was leaving for four nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> great. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but, to, you know, it's like that's why everything seems like it's so successful because you guys seem yeah. like right. you mesh very well. Mm -hmm. But um, so then kind of like, uh, so after college, yes. you start progressing into life. Mm -hmm. And then at what point do you start like kind of foraying into like these baking things yeah. and the book stuff and so, all that? Yeah. Right, shortly after college, we've always, I just shouldn't say we've always baked, but we have baked here and there. Growing up, it was all box like Betty Crocker or Duncan Hines like yeah. if we bake something it was it was out of a box or uh Car we have to give a shout out to Carousel Bakery and Hazlitt if you haven't tried it Very it's good. great it's been there since I can remember and that's yeah. where we get all of our birthday cakes and stuff from and I just always thought that was really cool to be able to you know make people happy through food and then after, shortly after graduation just decided to give these hand decorated cookies a try we'd actually ordered cookies from a local home baker and for our graduation party. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I feel like I can try that. Yeah. And so just found a recipe on Pinterest and tested it a couple of times and people really liked it. We served them at Christmas in 2014, I mm -hmm. guess that was. And since then, I've just really been baking. We had a couple of family friends like, oh, you do this. Can I'm having a baby shower or yeah. I'm having a housewarming. Can you bring cookies? And it kind of slowly started, started. to grow yeah. and grow. And uh, New Jersey just passed the home cottage baking laws mm -hmm. in October. So in October of 2021, and we just got our license in February okay. of this year. So now we can fully sell out of our, yeah. our apartment and okay. you know, advertise all right. and all that I didn't that know that stuff. was actually a thing. 
Yeah, yeah, New yeah, Jersey so a was a lot of state. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people state. don't. So you could you could bake anything and donate. Um, you just couldn't make profit mm-hmm. off of it, off of uh, the food. But now you can. The yeah. laws have been changed, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you, you said can, it was the last state like in the country. Last state in the country. country. Come on, Jersey. I know. That's I know. It was supposed to be passed shortly before the pandemic, but then uh, obviously, but obviously other priorities. Yeah, I was yeah. like, all right. I was like, I guess we have something a yeah, little more important. Like, this yeah. just went to the bottom of the totem pole. <laughs> right. yeah. But uh, then it was passed in October. So everyone's really, really excited about it. And yeah, so now we can, now technically we can advertise, but we honestly have been getting a good amount of business without it. So yeah, I'm like, right. Okay, <laughs> you know I haven't posted yeah. too too much, um, but excited to for people to learn more and mm-hmm. be able to to taste cookies and just been it's been really cool to be a part of so many people's activities. You know, yeah. people don't really order cookies for sad events, mm-hmm. so for the right. most part, it's like baby showers, birthday parties, bachelorette parties, greetings from the Garden State happy exactly. hour, yeah, yeah. Yes. greetings from the Garden State happy hour, all yeah. those types of things. So it's fun to be able to, especially during such a down, down time, time. Yeah. yeah, to be able to bring joy to people through yeah. cookies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know that like the cookies that you guys sent over to us for our party that was back on April 7th and this is going to post later. So yeah. people maybe will have our second event by then. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like they love them. Oh, like, good. Like you know, New Jersey shaped cookies. They said yeah. Jersey on them. We New have, Jersey I have actually them. have a couple here. Oh, yes. More. <laughs> more, 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 more. Always. There's oh, always, yeah. yeah. Oh, so these, are, these are bigger. These are, yeah. uh, I think. These are, uh, uh, yeah, they're about the same, but they're oh, okay. just in blue. Mm-hmm. I had blue writing this time. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm definitely going to eat these. So. <laughs> um, awesome. So uh, I, I know like the baking stuff mm-hmm. uh, was something that you guys were like always trying and doing different things, yeah. but doing like these side hustle projects, was that something that you both like were always kind of involved in like throughout life, I yeah, guess? Yeah, we've always been like jam packed, busy. Yeah. So it's been, it's been like that our entire lives. Yeah. Uh, when we were younger, sports, uh, we used to do acting and modeling. We would mm-hmm. go into the city, do auditions. We've done a couple of commercials, uh, television shows, things like that. Yeah. So that's been always like consistently yeah. and just a uh, packed schedule, something that I'm used to, something that I enjoy. When we went to college actually, and you know, in college you really only have class for about three hours a day, yeah. maybe four. Right. And that's what made me really homesick because yeah. our days were not filled with anything for the first couple of weeks. And then once we got, you know, the hang of it and everything was packed, then of course I didn't miss home because I didn't yeah. have time to miss home. But <laughs> right. yeah, that's just, this kind of yeah. side hustle thing has always been We also, consistent. our dad is a personal trainer. Okay. Or was a personal trainer. And he, uh, so we grew up, our childhood essentially, I mean, our mom works too, but essentially was funded through a small business owner. Right. Mm-hmm. So just to be able to see that, like build your own schedule. He picked us up from school. We would <laughs> hang out at the gym after, after yeah, school. Yeah. So just to be able to have that flexibility and see somebody make it work um, is something that has always been inspiring to yeah. us. So mm-hmm. just to be able to kind of have a little piece of that um, and some of the things that we do is always really cool. Right. Yeah. And then like we were talking about how you guys are involved in a lot of different things, but I think what's also interesting, and you said pack schedule is something that you enjoy, mm-hmm. um, but like, how do, you, how do you have this many hours in the day to do all like <laughs> these other things? So can we just like hit on the other stuff that you guys do yeah. and then we'll like figure out like what the next thing you're going to add to the whole? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what can we add? Yeah, what can we list? add on to this list Absolutely. to make it even longer? So, yeah. Like I said, we work full time at Media Planet. We are um, bakers, so we yeah. have double dough. We also have a brand called Completely Booked. So I started a book Instagram. It focuses on diverse authors. So we do that. I host cool. a yeah. book club monthly with that. And then I'm posting. I'm usually behind the scenes, moving the ring light, <laughs> yeah. getting, handing her the books to take pictures with. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so doing all of that. I mean, social media is not, some people see it as a job, it, not a job. It is a job, uh, yeah. whether it's a hobby oh, or, yeah. or, it's or a actual career. <laughs> yeah. So keeping up with that, Instagram lives, things like that. We do freelance writing um, for a blog called Hoboken Girl here in Hoboken, yep. obviously. <laughs> and then also Montclair Girl. So there's a blog in, in Montclair called Montclair girl same um, parent company same brand there Mm -hmm. so we freelance right for them and then for Hoboken Girl we're actually the volunteer coordinators so once a month we try to put on some kind of event or some kind of drive that we do we have our own nonprofit, Four Little Souls Incorporated, which were two of uh, four co-founders. Okay. And then we're also on the board of a nonprofit here in Hoboken called Party with Purpose. Yeah. And then we are uh, authors of two children's books, yes. Twin Tales. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I tell everyone, like, not everything is going on at the same time. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. When you author the book, you author the book, and, and that's, that's, like, it. kind of You're, it. Yeah. Right. We, we self- market it. We go to sure. fairs and stuff. stuff but, right. but even before you got to the books, there was, there was a lot of things. There was yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, not all the time. Like Little Souls, we try to do one to two like larger events a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we were fortunate enough just be from donations and things like that to be able to help people as needed. Right. Yeah. If someone calls us, you know, we can donate or, or you know, do do whatever. Party with Purpose has two big events a year. So we, we can make yeah. our schedule work. Yeah. yeah. Work, obviously. Media Planet, Double Joe, and Hoboken Girl are consistent. That's right. always yeah. all the Happening time. all the time. Yeah. And then the other yeah. things, and completely booked. And then the other yeah. things are, you know, kind of here and there. Right. But I think, so, like, I feel like bad about myself because <laughs> I thought that I was doing a lot of stuff and then I was like, oh, <laughs> Jordan and 12 got a lot more going on than me. It's two of us though. Yeah, exactly. It's that, two of that, us that, working That's a good segue. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are pros. So um, t- maybe take me through, and this is going to be like a slam dunk and you can, you know, show some love, but yeah. um, like the benefit of having, you know, Two of you. Yes. Yeah. Like working on the same page, doing the same kind of stuff, like same kind of goals, all that kind of thing. Definitely. Sure. So I would say that we both, we each have, you know, of course, like everyone, we have strengths and weaknesses and being together all the time, living together, yeah. working together. We know each other's strengths and weaknesses inside and out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if there's something that needs to be done, we generally, things just kind of fall in place. We don't right. have to necessarily decide who's going to do what or say, mm-hmm. no, I wanted to do that, but I also wanted to do that. Like <laughs> we kind of know like for the cookies, for instance, Jordan makes all the colors. Mm-hmm. So the icing comes white Eight. and whatever <laughs> color you want to make it, you have to make Diet, it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So Jordan does all of that. The hand, anything that's handwritten. So like this New Jersey, Jordan wouldn't even dream of no. writing on a cookie. <laughs> My handwriting is that of a three-year-old. I'm not, I used to say five, but that's, that's an insult to five-year-olds. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. I, it's like a three-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's just certain things that, I'll just kind of jump in and do and other things that Jordan will jump in and do completely booked is Jordan so she'll mm-hmm. do a majority of that stuff I wouldn't say Double Doe is mine by any stretch of the imagination because right. I would never be able to do it without Jordan yeah. but any of the communication with our clients any communication with mm-hmm. you know what is our schedule like we have a board in our kitchen and I'll write out how, you know who's ordered what yeah. how many cookies did they order what colors do we need <laughs> um, there's a difference between the writing icing and the regular icing how, yeah. what consistency does it need to be and I'll write all of that out so then Jordan can kind of jump in and just know what's happening yeah. from yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Split yeah. up the articles, you know, from Hoboken and Girl. Mm-hmm. You'll see the byline, it's Jordan and Joel, but mm-hmm. one of us usually writes the articles. And so we kind of split it up when we get our assignments or if we have ideas that we pitch to them. You know, if it's an idea Joel thought of or an idea I thought of, we'll take it yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we just kind of, and then seeing with work, right? So now my schedule is a little bit busier than Joel's, whereas right. last year this time, I was in a completely different, different. role oh, yeah. that wasn't, that it wasn't like that involved at work at all. Yeah. Yeah. So there were times that I could, you know, do stuff during the day and just make things work. But now managing the entire office, right. uh, the entire, which is the largest office in the company is a lot. Yeah. So, you know, Joel has taken on a lot of more of our outside stuff because I have more like work work. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was very cool. And also <laughs> like, I'm just going to say it, the handwriting oh, is yeah, impressive. Yeah. Thank you. That, Joel like, does different it's so fonts. consistent. Thank you. Like all the cookies that you guys sent for the event, I was like, oh, like these look like amazing because they all look exactly, <laughs> exactly the like, same. Yeah. These, like these, this is like my writing, handwriting. But yeah. there's, um, we have a projector too. That's the, yeah. that's the secret. We have a, we do a projector that I can put a logo on and project oh, it on the that's cookie cool. and then yeah. trace. But this is my, like if I was to write you a letter right yeah. now, that's what it like, would look dear like. Dear Mike, yeah. thanks yeah. for having me on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> awesome. All right, so we're going to dive deeper into uh, Double Doe and Completely Booked in the second segment. So we're going to take our first break of this episode. Uh, so this is the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We are here with Jordan and Joel Hernandez in Hoboken, New Jersey. We'll be right back. It is time for today in New Jersey history. Lily Auchincloss passed away on June 6th, 1996. Born in Newark, she spent her life not only as a philanthropist, but also as a journalist. And in 1980, she was inducted into the Best Dressed Hall of Fame. And that is today in New Jersey history. All right, we're back for segment two of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm Mike Ham. We are here in Hoboken, New Jersey with Jordan and Joelle Hernandez. So in the first segment, we learned about your background, how you basically have spent all of like five days, you know, <laughs> or, except for five days. I don't know if I said that yeah, right, right, but it doesn't right. matter. Uh, I talk for a living. So, um, <laughs> but uh, we kind of like learned like broad strokes, yeah. all the stuff that you guys do. And it's a lot and yeah. we have a short amount of time. So we're going to make sure we get to it. So we're talking about com- uh, completely booked first. Mm-hmm. So take me through maybe like, 
like how that got started and then what it is. Yeah, so Completely Booked started in 2019, really, officially in 2020. And I, I just was, I always read books, right? So I commute in and out of the city, always reading books, magazines. Because you have so much free time on your hands. <laughs> yeah, right, just yeah. so all of the free time. And I was commuting from Hazlitt to New York. Of course, I had a little bit more time than Hoboken to New York. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, always have a book with me, a magazine, what have you. And so I started on my own personal Instagram every other week doing book reviews. And I was like, what's going to be the name of this thing? Yeah. And because we do so much, I was like, oh, oh completely I booked. Yeah, I just <laughs> yeah, I was got like, that. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I decided to do that. And then actually on February 24th of 2020, everyone always asked me if it was a pandemic project. And it was not. It was about like three weeks before yeah. the pandemic, before the world stopped, that I just started. I made its own Instagram at underscore completely booked. And just started posting about the books that I was reading, not knowing that I would have all the time in the world to read all of these <laughs> yeah, books. Yeah, that's true. I was like, oh, my idea is going to be that I'll be like, you know, going here on the weekend and I'll be traveling and I'll have my book with me. We weren't going anywhere. Yeah. I'll be on my couch. Right. Right. Yeah. Maybe I'll move from <laughs> one end to the to next. Yeah. Yeah. So It'd like, be a big day for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like that was really it. And was posting and then actually New Jersey Digest, which is a website, reached out yeah. to me. And at that time, I think I maybe had like maybe 500 followers, if that. And they said, we want to feature you on a bookstagram hmm. post. I was like, what the hell is bookstagram? Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a bookstagram. I thought it was like a separate. <laughs> oh. When she said, when Jordan said, oh, they're going to feature me on this bookstagram, I'm like Googling, is this a new social media, media platform, platform yeah. called bookstagram? But I was it's like, just, what is this? You it's are just a bookstagram. Like, yeah, yeah, like a segment of Instagram where about people only books. post about books. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Great. Uh, so I was one of, I think, maybe like six or seven. And, you know, that was cool. Got a couple of followers from there. A couple of months later, that was in, I think, June of 2020. A couple of months later, in August of 2020, we were filming a TikTok because we didn't have so anything silly. else to do. We were just jumping around. Like, just, <laughs> it was so dumb. <laughs> and uh, I go and completely booked and I had all of these new followers. And I was like, oh, maybe Hoboken Girl did some things. You know, if she posts about us, I usually get a lot of followers, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, no, yeah. Jen didn't post anything. Jen is the, the owner of Hoboken Girl. And I was like, oh, my God. I just started screaming. I said to Joel, I was like, Oprah's book club just reposted me. <laughs> I was like, what is this? I mean, all of these people started yeah. following me. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God. I had posted about the book Cast, uh, which is by Isabel Buckerson. If you haven't read the book, it's incredible. It's about the caste system in the United States. Um, and it compares it to the caste system in India and the caste system of Nazi, uh, Germany. Nazi Germany. Okay. So it's uh, it's interesting Heavy. and basically yeah. how ours is the worst. Oh, um, great. Right. So <laughs> Wonderful. Just some right. light reading. Some light yeah. reading. A beach read. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I posted, about, I posted about that and she she reposted me. And from there, I was kind of like, this is a like this is a thing. Yeah. And then Hoboken Girl had posted that I had a book club. I did not have a book club. <laughs> and all these people started messaging, we want to join your book club. We want to join your book club. So it was like... I guess I now have a book club. So I started uh, started a book club right after that in January of 2021. And it's just been, it's been really cool. In February of 2021, um, a friend of mine who I met through book club said that the author of this book, who was just named a New York Times bestseller, it was her husband's roommate and he could come on my book club. Okay. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And people loved that he was on. So I was like, well, let me reach out to some other authors and see if maybe they want to come on my book club. Yeah. And so nine out of the 11 months that we had book club in 2021, I had the author on. Cool. And I was like, this is you know pretty cool. It can keep going. And so far this year, we're, we're fully booked with authors through October. Yeah. Um, so people can join. It's virtual. I'm going to keep yeah, it virtual. Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah. Um, like it's on Zoom, I'm guessing. On yeah. Zoom, yeah. once a month, Tuesday nights, 7 to 8 p.m. It's only one hour a month. And we have people from a across the country. Very cool. uh, one, one girl who's been a faithful member since the first book club actually found me through Oprah's post. Yeah. And she's in California. So I am pretty strong have, following in Tennessee. Yeah, I was going to say, I oddly have a lot of people in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. Um, that, that follow. I like and then, Yeah. 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 And then, I've never uh, been. But I've never been. I'm oh, like, I guess so I, guess I need to go. go. You yeah. gotta go. Um, and then, of course, a lot of people in Hudson County. So I yeah. try to do some in-person events, but um, once a month is, is virtual sure. book club. Yeah. No, that's really cool. And like you said, I mean, it's diverse authors, yeah. uh, but one book a month? One book a month. Always Ooh, a diversity is completely what I focus on on the page. And diversity of all kind, right? Of course, yeah. race is what people think about immediately. Sure, but, but ability, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, religion, all those you know kind of things with diversity um, that I feature on my yeah. page mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone is represented because I just think that's super important. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. And then how do you... 
Now, this is, comes from someone that does not read <laughs> n- nearly enough. You I just started... Like, uh, she, and she runs a book club. I, I have access to all these books. All I these books. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just started reading um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by oh, yeah. um, Dan Carnegie, okay. I think. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, that might not be the right name, but yeah. um, it's like a, like a well-known book. Right, right, right. Like, like, like a self-help, yeah. yeah. And, like, for the, like, I started reading it. I was like, this is great. And then it's been two weeks, and I don't even think I've touched it. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I got to get, I got to get back into it. So maybe, like, joining a book club would keep me yeah, accountable. joining a book club. I mean, Instagram definitely keeps me very accountable. Like, yeah, I right. Like I have to, you know, yeah. post quite often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I spend a lot of money on books. Um, but well, how do you pick the book? Whatever author gets back to me first. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm being very honest, yeah, right, no, cool. there's there's some books that come out that I'm like, oh, this one's well, you have to choose really to reach good. out to the author. Yeah, I reach out yeah, to yeah, the yeah. author. Yeah, and right. I, you know, I'll do like a bulk. This is where like you know, having inf- information and skills from my job, my real sure. job is sales. And part of it was sales, you know, when I was in an entry level position to now learning how to prospect to people, chat with them, get, you know, get my message across very concisely in an email translates into this book club. Sure. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I'm able to reach out to the authors, kind of find their information and just email them. And yeah. Everyone's always like, oh, is it so hard? But if, as an author myself, if somebody emailed and said, hey, I have about 25 people who are going to buy your book or rent it or listen to it, absolutely mm-hmm. I'll give you an hour of my time. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, you know, yeah. people... She, there was just an author on not too long ago who lives in London. Yeah. And she came on the book club. It was midnight her time. She's like, no problem. Uh-huh. There was... Thir- almost 30 people on the book club. She's like, uh, 30 people just bought my book and want to talk about it for an hour. Yes, yes I will get on yes. Zoom with you yeah, at yeah. midnight. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, so I, I'm assuming, and this might be wrong, but uh, the book club, did that start the process of you guys actually writing the books? No. Or was that so separate? That was separate. So that was started as a college project. Oh, okay. um, we were... We took a video editing class, honestly, just to get an easy A in college because yeah. we had been video I, editing. I worked at the, at the television station for two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I knew it was just like with video editing 101. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, took a, I took a gym class in college. <laughs> yeah. I played yeah. Yeah. college yeah. baseball like, for four years. Right. So I'm like, like, just here to yeah. get an A. Yeah. I'm good. And yeah. our professor who was, you know, we were fairly close with when we were in school was like, I'll give you your A. He was like, that's fine. I know I got you. I know what you're here for. Yeah. But I want you to get something out of this class. And so he asked us if we would write a children's book. And he's just like one of those people that yeah, like he's very he would literally top. say yeah. to you like tomorrow you're gonna have a TED talk like yeah. you're like okay yeah. like, all right yeah. Yeah. like you're yeah. like whoa yeah. Yeah. yeah like calm down so when he yeah. said that I was like all right whatever yeah. Doc Chris like yeah 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 and he was like no I'm very serious like yeah. you're gonna write this book so I was like whatever we wrote the book fast gave it to him I was like happy like can I just sit in this class now and chill he's like yeah you can, but now you need to find an illustrator, and now you need to go through the self-publishing process. And then we graduated, and I was like, "All right, we're done with this." And he kept yes. following up and being Where's like, "Where's the book? Where's How's the book?" Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, a family friend of ours took us a long time to find an illustrator. Yeah. And a family friend of ours said to our mom, "Well, you know, let Austin draw the pictures for the girls, and you know, maybe they hate it, maybe they love it. We'll see." Her son's an artist, and he's our illustrator, yeah, so it worked he's out. Great. Yeah. Drew the high school with his sister, cheered with her, and. He's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So we started that. The first book published in 2016. Mm -hmm. And then when everything was happening in 2020 with Rachel Reckoning and Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, I was just like, I I can conceptualize this because, you know, I'm older. But for a child in school going through this, like... How do you How start do you know? that conversation? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, unfortunately for parents like ours, you have, you have to, start to start the start conversation right, early. Right. But you have no choice. for other yeah. children, you know, you you might not have to. Right. So we wrote the book, and it's a very, very, very soft um, explanation as to yeah. kind of like celebrating color, color right? Yeah. And how you can celebrate other people's differences without pointing them out. No. Right. Every, everyone is different, right? We're, we're identical twins and we're different. Yeah. Right. And they, there are different, you know, there are things that you can celebrate and I think that's important for children mm-hmm. to learn at a young age that maybe somebody doesn't look like you or believe the same things you do or talk the way that you talk or have the same things that you mm-hmm. have in your home or maybe their home even looks different. Yeah. Uh, but there's, you know, there's a reason for celebration for everyone. Yeah. Of course. So that we wrote that in 2020. Of course, the illustration process, the self-publishing process takes a little while. So it came out in January of 2021. Okay, Mm -hmm. awesome. All right, so love the stuff about the books, the children Mm -hmm. books, the book club, Um, but now we're going to get into Double Doe, which I'm pretty sure is how I found you guys. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, So let's, let's, we know what it is. Mm -hmm. You bake cookies and other things, (laughs) I would imagine, Um, but maybe kind of take me through like a little deeper dive into Double Doe. Yeah, Double Doe, it's like, like I said before, we just kind of started it after graduation, after college, and then started baking for family and friends, 
and really just started growing from there. People would say, oh, I saw something on Instagram. I would post If I made something, I would post it on Instagram. And it's so funny because when we first started, I would make a, a batch of batter. And then I'd say, oh, I have to throw this out because you know somebody only ordered 12. Now I can't keep enough <laughs> really? cookie dough in yeah. my refrigerator. Yeah. I make double a batch at a time. And usually I'm making like five, six rounds of that double batch yeah. at any given moment because people will you know reach out and ask for things. But it's just been really cool to be a part of of all of those things and we have a collection of probably close to 500 cookie cutters now because yeah. people will order you know can I have the shape of New Jersey or right. can I have and it's crazy that they sell these things uh, there are people that that sell just cookie cutters and they 3d print them so you can find generally anything you yeah. want literally anything but connecting with people mostly through Instagram direct message yep. is how that's we, how, how, yeah, we that's receive, how we did it yeah. Yeah. yeah how we receive our inquiries and for now you know maybe <laughs> there'll be an order form or something right. someday in the near future but right. for now we accept everything via via Instagram DM and people are so incredibly nice and yeah. so kind and just so I, I'm not an artist, right? I'm people are like, oh you must this do, is art. You must draw right. <laughs> but I'm, in terms of like Drawing, drawing, right? Well, like I don't know how this to. This like, is art too. Right, but right. I'm not, I can't draw. For right. It. <laughs> I'm not a drawer. I'm not a painter. So people are like, oh, you must. Did you go to art school? Did you like? No. Nope. But <laughs> if you ask me to draw a person, it will be a stick figure. Yeah. Uh, so, but people are generally very open to creativity. You know, this is what I'm thinking of, and we, you know, kind of work with people to narrow things down and what mm -hmm. can actually be put on a cookie. Yeah. Right? Right. It's, yeah, yeah. It's interesting sometimes the things that people ask for, and it, and we try to make it happen as close to what they're looking for, what their vision is right. as possible. And it's so fun when you see people text, or usually if there's an event, they'll email or, or text a picture. This is what they look like when they were out. Everyone yeah. loved them. They were so great. So it's just really, really fun to be able to be a part of so many people's activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So obviously, like we have like the New Jersey ones here, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're all about because we're in New Jersey. Easy, but right. <laughs> um, but you also did like cookies from every state. Yes, right? so, so we're in the middle of cookies from cookies from every state project right now. So we are trying to accomplish this throughout the year, throughout 2022. We're going to make 50 different types of cookies inspired by every state across the country. So we just did New Jersey, and our New Jersey cookie was a. Actually, have some here. Our New Jersey cookie was a uh, honey cookie sandwich cookie. What else do you have in that bag? I know. <laughs> no, that's I was it. Like, this, is, this is the extent of the It's like Mary bag. Poppins. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know Mary, half the stuff Mary was going to be that bag. Um, it's a honey cookie because the New Jersey state insect is a honey bee. Okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That and was one of our the, New Jersey uh, fun facts, actually, oh, in one nice. of our segments. Yeah. And then the inside is a blueberry um, buttercream oh. okay. because the state fruit is blueberries in New yeah. Jersey. We make some of the most. I don't think it's the most, but like it's I think it's the third most. Um, blueberries in the world. Yeah. So just merely trying to shed light on all the different things that are happening throughout the United States. Obviously, it's a huge country in comparison yeah. to other countries. Right. And there's just so many fun facts, so much diversity happening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially through food. Especially through food. Oh, that's, generally like, that's why I like traveling. Right. Yeah. You get to like experience so many different yeah. types of places and food. There's like not like one like American food. I think there was a show yeah. on Netflix and it was really only Thanksgiving that, you know, you, Thanksgiving that everybody is the only does meal the that thing. everyone sell, everyone eats generally alike, right? There's yeah. turkey, there's cranberries, there's stuffing. Yeah. Right. And, but, but then if like you're Italian, like me, like we, there's raviolis. Yeah. We, we, don't have, we don't have Thanksgiving unless there's lasagna. Yeah. 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 brings lasagna right. every year. Yeah. yeah. So there's, you know, you have your, your cultural things, but generally that's the only sure. meal that is eaten the same across the country. Mm -hmm. If you go down south, you have barbecue or soul food. You right. go up north. And even barbecue and soul food is it's different. different. No North Carolina, where you go. Austin, Houston, yeah. who right. is, exactly. you know, uses right. vinegar, who, who uses doesn't, this, right. Right. Yeah. whatever. Right. So learn all the different climates and landscapes obviously bring different types of food to mm -hmm. uh, to the table yeah. just because of what's been available and then different um, cultures. Right. And we made a, a coconut, Carolina coconut cookie a couple weeks ago. And it's so interesting because South Carolina has a lot of coconut influence in their food, but it's because African slaves brought mm -hmm. coconuts to mm -hmm. the United oh, States right. and yeah. South Carolina, Charleston right. Right. was one of the main ports. If yeah. you watch High on the Hog on Netflix, they talk a lot about that. I haven't watched High on the Hog. Oh, I definitely want to watch one. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's excellent talking about all the, the different food and, and influence and, and uh, that black people have brought to the yeah. United States. Because you don't think coconuts. Right. In the right. You, don't US think, you, don't like, you don't think like coconuts <laughs> Maybe South like Carolina. Hawaii, right? I guess, but that <laughs> you don't barely make counts. that connection. Right. Yeah. But their state dessert is a coconut cake. Oh. 
and okay. because of, the, of right. the African influence. So thinking about all of those things and how that influences what we eat today. Yeah. When I was reading the article, there's a restaurant down in South Carolina that's known for, they've trademarked this coconut cake that they sell. And yeah. I'm like, that's great. You know, that's wonderful <laughs> for that restaurant. But right. coconuts were actually bought here in the 1800s, so yeah. there's you know, there's a lot of history behind it, yeah. and it's it's just fun. It's a good you know educational way. I feel like parents could watch it with kids. They're 30, 45 seconds long, nothing too crazy, but there's a jam packed with yeah. a lot of information. And yeah. we try to make the recipes generally easy enough and with ingredients that people would maybe have at home or could easily find that it's they're fun to make and you could absolutely follow along with it. Okay, so I was thinking that like you were selling, selling the cookies. Oh yeah. This is Maybe. more of an educational yes. thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the hand cool. decorated cookies, the hand these decorated cookies sale. we sell. Yes. Right. The hand decorated yeah. cookies we sell, cupcakes, chocolate covered pretzels, Oreos, cakes, cakes oh. all that stuff, but mm. these are more just for a fun uh, fun follow along project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, very just cool. something that we decided to do. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, maybe by June I'll be like, why did I do this? Is, <laughs> this is a big undertaking, <laughs> but for now it's this a lot of yeah. good. Yeah. It's going great. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so then uh, the baking stuff went beyond just what you guys are doing in your own kitchen. Yes. Because you were on NBC's Baking, baking It, it. Uh, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about that, like how that happened yeah. and then what the experience was like. Oh my God, it was wild. It was uh, last year in 2021, and I guess it was like February I got a sponsored or Joelle, I got a sponsored Instagram post yeah. and sent it to Joelle in a direct message about like, are you a home baker and you know, do you want to compete on television? Whatever the post said. And I sent it to Joelle in a direct message and she was like, Oh yeah, like I saw I that. I actually saw it the day before and I just didn't do anything yeah. with yeah. it. And I was right. like, yeah, okay. And then a couple of weeks later, a friend of ours who's a fashion designer, she sent us a couple of her clothes, you know, a couple of pieces and was like, Can you guys take pictures? We said, sure. So of course, again, pandemic, my hair and makeup were never done. Yeah. Right. So mine either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when we took those pictures, I was like, well, better day than ever to t- take this, you know, yeah. entry video, whatever. Yeah. Sent it. Uh, a couple Couldn't of weeks. Couldn't be longer than 90 seconds. So we're like, right. right. Yeah. Long. yeah. A couple of weeks later was actually the day that we got our second vaccines of 2021 in April, the end of April. I got a call from a Los Angeles number, but I work with the LA Times. So I yeah. was like, oh, let me answer it. Not right. thinking it was somebody from work. It wasn't. It was a casting agent. And we did our first interview that following Friday, that was a Wednesday. We did our first interview that Friday. So again, end of April. And then we're like thrust into months of auditions, yeah. Zoom auditions, baking different things, yeah. sending in videos, editing videos, all that kind of stuff to enter. Sure. Yeah. And then we found out in August that we made it. So yeah. it was, you know, a good little while that we were just baking at yeah. <laughs> all <laughs> hours of the day. Yeah. Right, just all of these different things right. that they would ask us to do, none of which were like on the show, right? Of right. course not. Yeah. So yeah. We, uh, we found out in August that we had booked it and we went to LA, LA. to film yeah. and to film it, a Christmas show in Los Angeles in August. Yes. So we Perfect. had on wool sweaters and oh, coats, yeah. and, but there were heat warnings all over set. Like, <laughs> yeah. stay hydrated, make sure you're right. safe. Don't and die. even with, um, <laughs> right. Right, with COVID and stuff, I mean, the restrictions, the wardrobe, you know, of course, they could get your clothes together. We had to bring our own clothes, yeah. Yeah. hair, makeup, and all that because, you know, just, just the COVID restrictions were tight. incredible. Yeah. It was right. very, very tight, like to the point when we were there, we were there for about three weeks. I didn't even want to come home yeah. because yeah. I was like, so I just felt so safe, safe finally yeah. for like a little bit of time that I was like this Delta is amazing. Delta was like raging at this point especially <laughs> yeah. in LA. Yeah. yeah so and, but it was when I mean, we were COVID tested regularly. All of the time. Yeah. If there was one thing I was sure of it was that I did not have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm positive I do not have COVID. Um, but yeah we had to go and buy our own clothes in August and, and yeah. make them look winter and then go out there but it was incredible. I mean the people that we met the other mm-hmm. bakers we still all talk to each other every, every day. day. Like yeah. actually every day. That's really cool. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we, we just went down to Maryland a couple of weeks ago to see uh, t- Tom and Steve, the father and son yeah. duo. They have a food truck right now, but they're opening up a bakery in April this month um, in to Annapolis, Annapolis Maryland. Yeah. We've ordered chocolates from Jessica and Stephanie, who are the winners of the show. Yeah. Jessica is a chocolatier. We talk to, we see Jonah, Patrick, and Reggie, the people in New York all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gerard, Gerard and Sean, we've done <laughs> quite a few business things with uh, since the show. So it's just incredible. I mean, yeah. that they could not have picked a better group of people yeah. to compete with. Right. Yeah, it was, it, it, the experience was unreal. I mean, we watch a lot of baking television, like yeah. too much baking television <laughs> yeah. probably. So right. to be on 
a show was so crazy. And I think when Maya, Maya Rudolph and Andy Samberg were the hosts, right. and they didn't tell us who the hosts were going sure. to be yeah, until yeah. they came, until they came on to set. Yeah. And they didn't even let us know, like, okay, the hosts are walking on. We just were all Turned kind of around, standing right. there. Yeah. And there were two people like, standing oh, in oh, for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there were two people standing in for them as they were getting the camera and lighting and all this stuff. And so they said, okay, we're just going to do another test run. And then Maya and Andy actually walked out. Yeah. And that was when I was like, <laughs> Wow, this is really. I, was, I real. knew before that moment that I was a Maya Rudolph fan. I'm like, of course, right? Who right. doesn't like Maya Rudolph? I did not know to the like magnitude that I was a Maya Rudolph fan <laughs> until she was right in front of me, and I nearly died. Yeah. yeah, I was like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever experienced in my entire yeah. life. They were so nice, like so generous with their time and just their their commentary and things like that. Mm-hmm. Just like you could tell the questions that they asked us as we were baking were so genuine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just, you know, they let us shout out Four Little Souls, our, our nonprofit, and Andy was like, you know, say the name of it. And I was like, I didn't know I was allowed to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, it was just, it was, it was really cool. The entire yeah. experience, everyone, the producers, the, yeah. the camera people, was just it was the, the lunch crew. I mean, the, even like the dishwashers. I was like, thank, thank you, you so much, thank you so much. <laughs> like, I know I've gone through like six KitchenAid bowls and yeah. at least ten whisks and right. spatulas and all that stuff. I'm like, I, and you get to just bake and not have to clean Literally up anything. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so the dream. Like, thank, you you know? so yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. But was everyone really cool. was great. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And it's such a it's such a cool thing. Yeah. You know? Um, but, uh, all right. So we went a little bit long in that second segment, which is totally <laughs> fine because we needed to get to a lot. Uh, so we're gonna take our second break, our last break of this episode. So this is the greetings from the garden state podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We're here in Hoboken, New Jersey with Jordan and Joel Hernandez. We'll be right back. It is time for your New Jersey fun fact of the day. Did you know that more Cubans live in union city, New Jersey, which is only one square mile than in all of Havana, Cuba. And that is your New Jersey fun fact of the day. All right, we're back for segment three, our final segment of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. Uh, I'm Mike Cam. We're here in, in Hoboken, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Oof, this, I'm <laughs> struggling through this intro. Uh, with Jordan and Joel Hernandez. So in the first segment, we learned all about you guys. Yes. Uh, in the second segment, we learned about Double Doe and Completely Booked. Uh, but in our third segment for every episode, we always do our community focused mm-hmm. thing. Um, and that's something that we had already kind of touched on that you guys do, but we're going to dive into it a little bit more. Um, so Four Little Souls, mm-hmm. tell me what that is yeah. uh, and what you guys do with that. Yeah, Four so, Little Souls Incorporated is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that we founded along with two of our friends, Mariah and Jonathan Austin, who are brother and sister. <laughs> and we started it at very young ages. We were maybe about eight or nine years old and just started to realize that there were certain people in our community that didn't have some of the things that we had. And so, of course, at that age, with the help, the heavy help of our Mm -hmm. parents, um, started this organization. And we started with doing things like beautifying daycare centers and putting together school supply drives and donating them to linkages down in Tinton Falls. They live there from uh, the Grimbridge, Jackson area. And like we said, we grew up in Hazlitt. Um, We all go to church together and just kind of started with small projects there yeah. and have really grown and in the last I would say two to three years the four of us have really taken it on ourselves of course our parents are there to support but really sure. making a conscious decision as now as adults <laughs> to continue this and do it do it all on our own the four just the four of us right. yeah our main pillars are to provide resources for hunger and education for children mm-hmm. if it goes into adults that, that have children so by supporting them inevitably we are helping their children yeah that's what we will do but education and hunger are the main two things that we focus on right mm-hmm. very cool and is that like throughout New Jersey is it goes beyond New Jersey um so we have done things globally mm-hmm. uh, we've sent years ago we did um, a partnership with Oprah's Angel Network um, mm-hmm. so we have sent money over Overseas, and then when hurricanes and things like that have happened, you know, we've we've been we've had resources to be able to support. But in terms of our hands-on efforts, we really do focus on New Jersey. Yeah. Um, Of course, there's just so many things here in the United States. I think sometimes when we think of things that go wrong, we did a drive not too long ago for period supplies, like sanitary products, and people are like, "Oh, that must be an issue in a third world." I'm like, "No, No, actually, 40 percent of girls in Hudson County do not know where they're getting supplies for their next month period." Yeah. That's crazy. crazy. Right. Yeah. That is and they crazy. miss school. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it is, it's right here that it's happening mm-hmm. too. So making sure that we're shedding light on that and of yeah. course providing resources um, for those who need. Right. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I, amazing. And the fact that you started it when you were eight. Yeah. Basically is even more amazing. <laughs> um, but uh, okay. So then like how do people, 
Is, is it just like the four of you? Do people get involved? Like how, yeah. how does that work? Generally when we have different events, so in the past pre-pandemic, we would do a big college scholarship fundraiser and that was a ticketed event where people would come and, and we would have a fundraiser in that way. And then we do in the fall, we typically, be, again, pre-pandemic, would do a happy hour at Jack Dempsey's in New York City and people okay. would buy tickets and we would donate money to No Kid Hungry. We did it virtually mm -hmm. in 2020 and we ended up donating the money to the Hoboken Shelter um, because there was just, again, such an immediate need right here. We live three blocks away sure. mm -hmm. from the Hoboken Shelter. So we figured to keep it in the community and, and do that. And then last year, we had a huge amount of people help us with our 2021 initiative, which was 2021 meals in 2021. And okay. so we had meal tickets that were sold and people could either purchase online. We did a double dough, did a bake sale. <laughs> yeah. um, we were selling cookies and, and that's how people were able to get involved. And we mostly were giving either monetary donations to different organizations that already had the resources in place. And you know, we don't have a facility where we can house food and all yeah, that yeah, kind of right. stuff. So we wanted to partner with people who are doing it, you know, health department inspected and all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. So we were doing a lot of monetary donations and then also uh, sandwich making. We had people uh, throughout the state, family and friends making sandwiches and donating to their local shelters. Mm -hmm. um, again, of course, this was, we were still in the middle of the pandemic, so um, keeping things as safe as possible while still making sure that we were yeah. we were accomplishing that goal. So, yeah. I mean, via social media, Four Little Souls uh, on Instagram, we try to post as much as we possibly can. All four of us are, of course, completely booked to, to, <laughs> to say the least. Um, Mariah is a is a, a professional educational professional, mm -hmm. and Jonathan is an accountant. So, and then of course we are, you know, we do what we do. Mm -hmm. So very, very busy people. Yeah. But um, as much as we can, we post and we'll have, you know, different events and things like that. Through the pandemic, we've tried to figure it out a little yeah. bit. The first five years that we were out of college, we had those two events and it yeah. was consistent. Um, we are in the works of planning something now for yes. the springtime and then probably to finish up in the fall, oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, which will be for educational and uh, hunger resources. But yeah. yeah, people can follow along and donate that where. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to let you know, I have this room rented out in 12 <coughs> Okay. Yes. We'll be done in like, what time is it now? 12 o'clock. Oh, okay. all right. Great. Cool. Sorry about that. No, that's, that's okay. okay. Okay, thanks. We can, we can, okay. can we have like five minutes? Yeah, okay, great. Okay. Okay, cool. So um, we're going to leave that in, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, okay, Party With a Purpose. Yes. Uh, so you have about five minutes left in this yeah. episode. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that. Yeah, Party With Purpose is a nonprofit organization here in Hoboken. We sit on the board, and it's a funding organization. So we throw a couple of events. We have a 5K every July. And then we, have, we used to have a winter benefit. Now we're kind of just calling it the benefit. <laughs> because we don't know when it's going to be. We don't know when it's going to be. Um, but probably sometime in September or October. And we provide micro grants. Um, to about 13 different charities throughout the state of New Jersey, focusing on children's needs, hunger, education, mental health are our main platforms that we try to support awesome. throughout the year. We usually provide about thirty to thirty-three thousand dollars in um, in grants. This year is about eighteen thousand. Yeah, pandemic has obviously shifted <laughs> things, but yeah, um, yeah about eighteen thousand dollars to different charities throughout the year. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So you guys got a lot going on. Yes. Um, okay. So just so people know, uh, so we could wrap this up. Uh, Instagram seems like yes. the spot. Instagram, Instagram is a spot. Instagram, so everything's happening. I, everything. always, I always tell everybody if you follow at Jordan and Joel on Instagram, we kind of throw everything there. there. So yeah. any events that we're doing, some completely booked stuff, some double dough, community service, um, any events that we have coming up, probably this podcast, you know, yeah, that yeah. kind of information, right. we'll throw on that Instagram and then you can kind of link out yeah, everywhere else or our website. Double is, dough. If you're looking to order cookies, the hand decorated cookies, cupcakes, like I said, all that stuff is for sale. Uh, reach out to us at double under the word double underscore dough. I realize that some people put like a double underscore when I say that, but it's the uh, word yeah. double under then yeah. underscore then dough. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. completely booked is underscore completely booked uh, at underscore completely booked. Our website is Jordan and Joel online .com. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can shop. We have our book available there. Yeah. Barnes and Noble, Amazon as well has our book. And then I do have a full line of uh, book products. Oh, nice. So yeah. I have totes, uh, bookmarks, cool. notebooks for completely booked as well. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So I'll make sure that I put all those handles and the website in the show notes, yeah. uh, along with greetings from the garden state.com and greetings from the garden state at gmail.com, which are the website and email of the show. Uh, so Jordan, Joel, thank yeah. you guys so yeah. much yeah. for this episode. This you. was amazing. Sorry, we have to cut it short a little That's bit. Okay. But <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
But thank <laughs> you so right. much for coming on. Thanks Appreciate for having it. us. This is wonderful. Absolutely. So this has been the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Ham. Uh, we were here in Hoboken, New Jersey today with Jordan and Joel Hernandez. Thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time. Oh. See you.